going to graph the inverses of sine and cosine functions. The inverse of sine is cosecant and the inverse of cosine is secant. We're going to start with the graph of cosecant function. Now there are some series of steps that you need to follow in graphing the inverse of sine function. First step is to graph the sine function of your cosecant graph because the graph of cosecant is dependent on the graph of your sine function. Then you need to find your asymptotes by finding the intercepts of your sine function, which is the inverse of secant, and then you will graph your cosecant function based on the behavior of your cosecant function. Now this is the graph of y equals secant x. So if you will notice, we have the graph of sine function here, the dotted line in the middle is the graph of sine function, and if the behavior of the secant function, which is the inverse of sine, behaves like this. So you have your vertical asymptotes for one period of your secant x. Now if you're going to use your graphing calculator and uh, find the graph of y equals secant x, it will show a graph that is something similar to this one. So if you will notice, this is periodic, just like the sine and cosine graph from the previous lesson, because all trig functions are periodic. Now let's have the first example in finding or sketching the graph of a cosecant function. Let's graph the function y equals 3 cosecant 1 fourth x. Now since the first step is to graph the sine function, you will need your amplitude and period for your sine function to graph or to sketch the graph of your sine function that you will use for your cosecant function. So the amplitude is absolute value of a, which is 3. So amplitude is 3, and your period will be given by the formula 2 pi over b, where b is 1 fourth. So you have a complex fraction that you need to simplify, which will give you 8 pi for the period of 3 cosecant 1 fourth x. So this period right here will apply for sine function and cosecant function. So let's graph the first function for sine because that's what we need to start our cosecant function. So the graph of the cosecant function, you have an amplitude of 3. So you have 3 here and negative 3 for your minimum and your period is at 8 pi, and you divide it into four equal parts. Half of 8 is 4, half of 4 is 2. Now to find the third part, just add 2 pi and 4 pi, and you'll have 6 pi. So you have your four partitions, you have your graph of sine function, now you need your asymptotes for your cosecant function. Now the asymptotes is just for the cosecant function. From our previous lesson, we've never seen an asymptote in our sine function because we don't need it. But now we need the asymptote for the inverse of sine. And the asymptote of your inverses will be coming from the intercepts of your sine function. So this is your intercept, and this is also your other intercept. And from the intercept, you can construct your vertical asymptote that you will use for your cosecant function. And this is the behavior of your cosecant function. From the maximum point, that will be your vertex for your first cosecant function or for the first part of the graph of cosecant function. So from the tip, you just uh, construct a uh, parabola um, graph or parabolic graph right here. And this will be the first half of your cosecant function. And from the tip of your minimum point, you will do the same. So you'll have two um, parabolas. Well, it's not really a parabola, but it looks like a parabola for the cosecant function. So this is the graph for y equals 3 cosecant 1 fourth x. So given the sine function, you find its inverse, and then you find the asymptote to construct your cosecant graph. Now, let's graph the other um, inverse function, and we will graph a cosecant function, I mean sine function. And here's the graph of a secant function. Now the steps in graphing secant function is similar to the graph of cosecant function. You will need to graph the inverse of secant, which is cosine, and that will be your um, basis or your foundation to graph your secant function. So the graph of y equals secant x has a behavior similar to this one. So this is for secant x, for one period of secant x, and if you uh, graph secant x in your calculator, you will see this type of graph when you hit graph in your graphing calculator. So it's pretty much the same as the uh, cosecant function, but it starts on a different point 
in your period. Let's sketch the graph of y equals secant 2x. So first step is to find the amplitude in the period of your cosine function, because that's the inverse of your secant function. So the amplitude for cosine 2x is 1, and the period for cosine 2x is 2 pi over b. b is 2, so you have pi. So you have an amplitude of 1 and a period of pi that you will use in graphing your secant function. So this is the graph of your cosine 2x with a period at pi, and then you partition it into four equal parts, half of pi, pi over 2, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4, then add these two together to get 3 pi over 4. So this is your four partitions for your graph of secant function. Now that you have graph your cosine, you need to find the amplitude, and the amplitude is based out of the intercept or the x-intercept of your cosine function, and your intercept lies at pi over 4, and 3 pi over 2. So that's your intercept. And then you draw your asymptote or your vertical asymptote to construct your graph of secant function. So just like the graph of cosecant function, the graph of secant function starts from the tip of your maximum and minimum point of your cosine graph. So this is your maximum point. So that's where your parabola will start forming and this is your minimum point so you have another parabola here and you, this is your other maximum point so you have another parabola opening up right here so this is the graph of y equals secant 2x based out of the inverse which is cosine function